Hey everybody, Jilly here from Baby Sleep Made Simple. Welcome back. This is our second live Q&A this week. The weeks are moving on. Um, and I'm back here for another hour. I'm on a little bit early because my husband wants to go play tennis. <laughs> so, and he deserves to play tennis. He has been house husband for daddy daycare, whatever you want to call it. He happily calls himself the babysitter. But he's been running the kids pretty much um, for like two months and he really wants to play tennis. So we're gonna let him go play tennis. So that's where I'm on early today. Hope you guys don't mind. I see a lot of you guys joining. Welcome. Um, get your questions in early. I'll try to get to as many as possible. We have about one hour. Yeah, maybe like 50 minutes because we gotta let him get to the tennis court and warm up. Um, yeah, our post today on social media, if you saw, or bedtime routine, frequently asked questions. So we're continuing on with our theme of just frequently asked questions, questions that my team and I get asked all the time. Um, and we're really going back to the basics. I'm trying to not do things that are terribly complicated. Um, but today's posts are the frequently asked questions I get about bedtime routine. And I actually get more, but I had to fit it all into a social media post. Um, so I won't even go over them now. If you just have questions about your baby's bedtime routine, then you can post them here. But I don't want to spend any time on it because I want to really try to answer all of you guys' question. I will say that someone just replied to my story and said, when can I introduce a pillow to baby? And what I would say is not before 18 months um, ideally 24 months, um, does your little one need a pillow? They just don't need a pillow when they're younger than 12 months for safety reasons. Um, and they really just are used to sleeping in their crib with just a mattress. And it's not until they're close to two years old that you can put in like a thin toddler type pillow. Definitely double check this with your doctor, but please don't give your baby a pillow, certainly before the age of 12 months. No loose blankets, no pillows. Um, we wanna keep your little one safe. Um, if you guys have any specific questions about your bedtime routine or your peaceful nightly ritual, as we call it, you can ask me here, but also please, if you're new to me and you haven't yet signed up for my free exhausted mom's survival kit, then you can click the link in my bio here to sign up for it. It walks you through the first steps of getting your little one settling easily at bedtime and sleeping great at night. And we talk a lot about your baby's bedtime routine, which we call the peaceful nightly ritual or our PNR. And we talk a lot, a lot about your baby's ideal bedtime. So what time they should be going to sleep every night. And then I give you tips on helping your baby actually go to sleep at that time. So please check that out. If you guys are in my survival kit and you have questions, post them here. Or if you just have any other questions, let me know. I think we'll talk about like night lights, sleep sacks. I'm looking at my notes, baby massage, nightmares, night terrors, all that good stuff in the next several days. Um, all right, let's see what kind of questions you guys have. Are you having a good day? Let me know if you're having a good day. We had a rough day yesterday. We did. They just come. They just smack you. <laughs> um, but we are a lot better today. I mean, the sun is shining. It's beautiful. I think you guys like to see green. That's why I try to like put the backdrop as like green, naturey outside. I'm really, really, really lucky. This is my office, so I get to have this beautiful green view every day, which keeps me sane. <laughs> um, a few other things that keep me sane, like dark chocolate, beer, and my baby being on a routine. <laughs> what's keeping you sane, guys? And are you guys reopening? Let me know what's going on in your life. We don't just have to talk about baby sleep. Um, Okie dokie, let's see. All you guys are here. Welcome, everybody. All right, first question, Diana. Good morning. My baby is waking up at 5 a.m. I'm sorry, Diana. Help, she's 13 months old. She takes two naps, uh, 1.5 hours, and goes to sleep at seven two naps a day, probably 1.5 hours each, I would hope so, and goes to sleep at seven o'clock. Well, I've got two things to talk about with you, Diana. First of all, and for everybody else, um, if I have a guide on my website that I can easily refer you to, then I'm gonna tell you, hey, hop on over to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, and find the guide, because they're lengthy, they got all the details that you need. So I do have a guide, Diana, on toddlers waking at 5 a.m. It's a, my most popular guide on the entire website, <laughs> for a reason. So please hop on over to my website and click on the toddler age at the top, and you can find that guide, read it, save it, do all the steps in that guide. The only thing I'll say is, it's 13 months, it's a little bit young, but usually between the age of 14 to 16 months, a lot of little ones wanna drop down to one nap. If the, if the early waking is very recent, that could be a sign that your little one's ready for one nap, but it's not necessarily. So instead, check out my toddler waking early. Guide is gonna walk you through everything, okay? Um, it's got a lot better details than I can give you right now. So check that out and good luck. 
Queen Yaya, what time should bedtime be for a seven month old baby? Between 6.30 to 8 p.m. asleep. That's the normal range, but you don't want your baby's bedtime to range by an hour and a half every night. Instead, find the time within that range that works best and then try to keep it at that time, like give or take 10 minutes on either side. When you can tighten up bedtime, that makes it go really well. A seven month old on three naps can usually be a little bit of a later bedtime, maybe like eight o'clock. Um, but once you drop down to two naps, bedtime has to move earlier. It's just the only way to make it work when you're following awake times. And then it can often be like 6.30, 6.45. Um, and if that's what leads to your baby sleeping long stretches at night and sleeping through the night, then a lot of parents are cool with that. But yeah, that's it, Queen Yaya. You could also check out my seven month old guide on my website and you can also check out my exhausted mom's survival kit we talk a lot about the ideal bedtime for babies i hope that helps alexa what can you do to help a four month old who always fights naps and sleep time he will be falling asleep and shake his head to wake up like no 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 no, no. that's not a good idea um well there's a lot going on at four months alexa i'm not sure if you've heard about the four month regression or the really big development that happens at this age it can throw our little ones sleep off course it's it's like a freight train so if your little one's behavior is quite recent that's probably what it is they're going through a big development and when they're trying to settle but they just seem restless or like jittery or wired that is totally a sign of a regression fighting sleep and just like buzzing all the time um if you hop over to my website you can see my four month old regression guide which has not just tips like on what it is but actually tips to help you survive it and I also have a guide on four month olds uh, not sleeping well. So you can check out both of those. They will tell you exactly what to do to help your four month old. Um, yeah, those two guides will give you all the answers. Hang in there, it does pass. You will survive it. I know it's tough, we just went through it recently. Um, but the guide will give you some, lots of specific details. All right, good luck. Courtney, lots of like sleep expectations questions. How long should a 12 month old nap for in total two to three total hours every day that's for babies basically six months all the way up to two years old two to three total hours every day <laughs> i had to check myself right there diana again how to get rid of the pacifier she only uses it to go to sleep she's 13 months you don't have to get rid of it for going to sleep if she can replace it by herself um in the night you could put five or six pacifiers around the perimeter of the crib and show her. Say, when you wake up, look, you just grab a passy and put it in your mouth. That's a really easy way um, to get your little one sleeping through the night when they're that old and you know they can replace it by themselves. Um, so I recommend you definitely do that before you consider fully weaning off of it. Um, and then if you want to fully wean off of it, the advantage is your little one's older so she can understand more. So I would start a few days earlier, like two or three days earlier, and just say the pacifier, you can come up with any story that you want. The pacifier fairy is coming and she's going to leave you a present. Um, the pacifier is going to go bye-bye. I mean, you can put it in a box and wrap it up as a present for a little baby. You can do all kinds of things, but give her a few days warning and then like let her see what's happening to it. Put it in the box, wrap it up. Let her like like draw a picture of a fairy or print a picture of a fairy and then the fairy's gonna come tonight put the pacifier like somewhere before she goes to bed and the fairy leaves her a little present you know just let her see it and hear it before you decide to get rid of it and then i'd probably just go cold turkey at that point it'd be a few days of resistance but then she would get over it luella my three month old struggling with daytime naps will only sleep on me being worn trying to get him in the bassinet or the crib but he wakes immediately after rocking i know luella it can be really hard um with a young baby that only wants to sleep on us i have three months can be like a really challenging age for a lot of parents so i have a few sleep guides but three month old sleep problems and solutions is probably the guide for you if you want to check that out on my website and we talk about babies that only want to sleep like on parents chest which is basically the same thing as being worn um what i will say is usually the first nap of the day is the easiest for babies and it's also the easiest to plan so for a three month old if your little one is waking up like at seven o'clock then they need to be asleep for that first nap about one hour later that's pretty much a given so if my little one wakes at seven o'clock in the morning i'm gonna go right eight o'clock he's gonna be down so it's like the easiest to predict and it's usually the one that they want that babies want to take the most like the most predictably the most well the most well i don't know if that's right in english but so what i would do then is not wear my baby for this nap instead if you're still swaddling your three month old i would go into the bedroom i'd start playing white noise i would darken the bedroom i would do a little bit of a calming routine feed him swaddle him you know all that good stuff and then try to um i'd probably just get him to sleep hold him for sleep for about five or ten minutes but not 
like holding him upright instead of holding him in a cradle position. So he's on his back or her back, sorry. I don't know, his, yeah. On his back. Um, and then when you're putting him into the bassinet, he's still on his back. When we wear our babies, they're more on their tummy. And so then we're asking him to sleep on their back and not next to mommy, so it's like two changes. So instead, hold him in a cradle position for five or 10 minutes and then try to transfer him. So that's what I would do and I would only work on the morning nap. And if you could do that, and oh, if you could get like a nice hour nap, hey, that's amazing. <laughs> and that's a huge accomplishment for this age. And then wear him for the rest of the naps for that day and then do this for a few days and then work on a different nap. But my three month old sleep problems and solutions guide will also has other nap tips for you. Hang in there, hang in there, it's gonna get better. Queen yeah, yeah. When I give a bath for my seven month old, he wakes up more at night. Really? Really? That's like the one factor? That's interesting. I've not heard that. I've heard that my baby screams coming out of the bath because he loves it so much, or it revs him up so much that bedtime, like it adds an hour to our bedtime routine. I've not heard of waking up more at night. If, the, if, you've, if you're like super consistent with everything else and this is really the one factor that makes your little one wake up more at night, maybe it's too exciting for him. So then you could definitely bathe your little one earlier in the day because you don't want to have more wakings at night. It makes me curious, but you know, every little one is different. Um, I would move it earlier in the day then for sure. Terry, hi Jilly, my almost five month old is still struggling with the fussy sleeping at 4.30 a.m. and throughout the night. Sleeps a total of three to four hours in nap time, that's good. We're on week two of what I think is the regression. Oh, that's a perfect emoji, where'd you find that one? Does that just mean like disgruntled and tired and confused? I should have used that yesterday. Um, hang in there Terry, because guess what? My rule is two weeks of sleeping disturbed and then you are free to say regression is finished and anything that we now have is from habit and your little one's turning five months. So literally like the perfect age to begin sleep training. You can do it gently, but more active measures of getting your little one sleeping well. You're on week two, so almost five month old. So I'm guessing your little one's gonna turn five months in the next week, as well as the regression ending. Then I'd say for sure, check out my five month old sleep training guide. Start those steps now, it's totally fine. And then you can work on independent sleep like as soon as they turn five months or 20 weeks from their due date, their 20 weeks adjusted age. Um, there's no need to struggle any longer. And it's a good thing because if you've been through the regression, regression, it's a sign that your little one's gone through the development. So now we know your little one has the ability to learn to settle themselves to sleep. There's a lot of positives, I swear. It doesn't feel like it. Um, all right, hang in there, Terry. Check out my five month old sleep training guide. Let us know if you have any questions. Cecilia, my 13 month old goes to bed at 7.30, breastfed and you two to five times a night. Should I try to put her to bed earlier so she gets a full night's sleep? said she can go without feeds during the night. Home visitor, probably, said she can go without feeds during the night. Um, so your little one's waking and feeding two to five times a night. I mean, putting her to bed earlier on its own is not gonna lead to her sleeping through the night. I'd be very surprised if it did. Um, sleeping, putting her to bed earlier could be indicated, but it really depends on her awake times and what time she naps and stuff. And you can check out my one-year-old sleep guide on my website to get the exact details on that. Um, but what I, so an earlier bedtime could be needed depending on awake times and naps, but more importantly is transitioning out of feeding her to sleep will definitely get her sleeping through the night. The way that she falls asleep at bedtime, which would be placed into her crib, give her a kiss, oh, mommy loves you, good night. I'll see you in the morning. And when you can walk out of the room and she can fall asleep on her own in the crib at that point, then she won't need you to feed her two to five times during the night because she knows how to put herself back to sleep when she wakes. So basically sleep training. Um, so Cecilia, so, so I would say you definitely have to incorporate sleep training. You may have to adjust bedtime, but definitely start sleep training. Um, and check out my one year old sleep guide because it's gonna have specifics of the naps and bedtime. All right, I hope that helps. Yeah, up two to five times a night, got it, sorry. VSRT, hi, when my baby misses her afternoon nap, she really struggles with nighttime sleep. Yeah, this is what happens because they become overtired. Overtired is like, oh, we're tired. It's like the worst phrase any parents ever heard. But I don't mean to like make it seem so scary, but if our little ones are up for way longer than indicated for their age, or if they miss naps, and they don't get at least two hours of daytime sleep, they'd be overtired. And it makes them just more wired and overstimulated and it worsens their night sleep. She knocked out at 5.45 instead of her usual 6.30, but she's been crying at least four to five times in the past five hours. Yeah, you did the right thing. So if your little one skips a nap and you're like, what am I gonna do? Like, she needs to fall asleep, like she's 
it's 5 p.m. and she's dying. Like she's ready to go to bed, but oh my gosh, this is so early. Should I keep her up to her normal bedtime? I don't want her to go to bed at five and wake up at like four in the morning for the day. Like, what do I do? What do I do? In a situation like this, you just go with the earlier bedtime. Your little one has lost daytime sleep and they need to try to add that in somewhere. And the easiest place to add lost sleep is an earlier bedtime. Going to bed at 5.45 versus 6.30 won't make that much of a difference. It could actually help like, not tonight, but it could help them sleep better sometimes you know what i mean because again you're not keeping them up longer and longer and longer and really stretching them if you have a day where your little one skips a nap and not knocked out at 5 45 and she's waking up tons of times in the night i mean it could be a sign of a sleep regression but also it's just it's kind of expected because she's overtired so you do the best that you could do to get through the night and then you just have a strong coffee in the morning take a deep breath and say okay back Back to the basics, I'm gonna follow awake times. I'm gonna try my hardest to get her to sleep at least two to three total hours per day. Maybe I have to help her with naps. Maybe I have to hold her, maybe I have to rock her, maybe I have to feed her. You know, maybe I have to do that to help her get enough daytime sleep and then we're gonna get back to our 6.30 bedtime, okay? Hang in there tonight, get some sleep if your little one's already sleeping and start over tomorrow. Courtney, how do I know if my two-year-old is having nightmares? Ah, oh, we're gonna talk about this soon. He woke early hours in the morning asking to get out and wanting cuddles. Um, nightmares can start at two years old. Usually it's like an older two year old or a three year old. Um, it's a sign of a developing imagination. And like a young two year old, like 24 month old, they usually don't have nightmares because usually the, their imagination isn't that sophisticated yet. But if they get out of the bed and want cuddles and stuff, it could be, I mean, I don't have to label it. It could be separation anxiety, but it could also just be that, you know, they want cuddles. I mean, nightmares, usually your little one's gonna wake up upset and crying and seeming a little bit different. Not the normal, I'm waking up and I'm crying because I want to get in your bed or I want to get fed or, or anything. It's more like waking up and very upset, like a different type of upset. Um, that's normally what a nightmare is. But what I would say, if you think it is a nightmare, it could be, do an inventory of your little one's videos, of your little one's books. Maybe um, if they have an older sibling or an older friend or a cousin, um, especially like pre-lockdown times, I would always suggest the parents, you know, even if you have an only child, like what are their older cousins showing them? If there's any sort of bad guys or villains, like it can really affect our little ones and make them have nightmares. It happened for my daughter. I mean, every single time if like she was with her friend or if they came over and if the friend got to pick the video that they got to watch like around three and four years old, <laughs> it's like Disney movies, but like the villains and she would wake up that night having a nightmare. Like she just couldn't handle it. So instead we just stuck to Peppa Pig because there's no, there's no bad guys in Peppa Pig. We love Peppa Pig. Um, so it could be that. So do an inventory of books and videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also just make sure your little one is well slept because that can also prevent them from waking up from bad dreams. Liana, what do you think of our program? What do you mean, Liana? Can you give me some more details? Kayleen, my now one-year-old slept finally slept through the night four nights in a row and now out of nowhere he started waking every three to four hours and hugs me so tight at night when he wakes and refuses to let go is he anxious oh um well i will say that the age of 13 to 14 months often is a high point for separation anxiety so it's 13 to 14 months and it's like 20 to 22 months these are the two that i have seen in my work the two periods of time that both for one-year-olds where they have heightened separation anxiety so I don't know exactly what happened with your sleep training. I mean, if you did something like extinction method where you put your little one in the crib and you never went back, yes, perhaps they could wake up in the night and feel anxious. I think that makes sense. But if not, if you were checking on your little one or if you stayed by your little one's side to help them, then I don't, I wouldn't think that it's that. But here's the thing, you can go to your little one when they wake up, you can cuddle them, cuddle them as tight as you want, reassure them that you're always there, but just don't hold him till he falls asleep. Give him all the cuddles he needs until he calms and say, okay, I'm gonna stay here, you're okay. I'm just gonna put you back in your crib. Put him in his crib and hold his hand or rub his head or rub his back. You know, do whatever it takes. If he's okay, then try to leave the room for him to fall asleep again. If he's having a really rough night, you can sit in a chair at the crib side. But please don't undo all of your effort, all of your hard work. Say, I'm gonna give my little one the cuddles they need, but they can still fall asleep in their crib. It is possible to do both. So give them the reassurance and back in the crib and let me help you, let me guide you back to falling asleep on your own. And you can do this for a few nights and then really work on getting yourself out of the equation um, again. And then just in the bedtime routine, lots of love, lots of cuddles and kisses and eye contact and letting your little one know that you're always checking on them. You know, just lots of reassurance. That can really help. Um, 
Yes, so those tips should help. But don't let mama guilt take hold of you and convince you that you've done something wrong and now your little one needs to sleep in the bed with you again every night, okay? It's not the case. <laughs> All right, good luck, honey. Nikki, my six month old naps four to five hours. Is it better to limit one hour naps? Four to five total hours, I presume. That's a lot and probably is affecting your six month old's night sleep. So what I would do is like today, I would limit the naps to four total hours. I do that for about two days and see how nights improve. Then I'd probably limit to 3.5 total hours a day and then see how it affects nights. And then you could go down to three. Usually three hours is our limit, but you could go like three and a half. Some little ones are able to sleep more during the day and it doesn't affect their night sleep. So I'm not gonna be like, limit them to three hours today. You can wean down slowly and you can hang out between three to 3.5 total hours. Um, but what I would do is wake them up from each nap at the one and a half hour mark. So I wouldn't let them have like a two and a half hour morning nap and then say, okay, you can only sleep for one more hour today. I would wake them up at the 1.5 hours in the morning and then again in the afternoon if needed. Um, don't limit to one hour total. That's Our little ones usually need longer daytime sleeps. So I would limit to one and a half, maybe two hours, but usually two naps of one and a half hours is great for your little one's age. Or you could do like an hour and a half and two hours, that's fine. Vanessa, dealing with early wakings, following all your tips, but it's still happening. Should I add back in a dream feed six months? Yeah, if your little one's fully weaned off of all night feeds um, and is six months old, and let's say that they're waking at like the 11th hour of the night and seeming hungry. I mean, they could be hungry because your little one's still quite young. So if that's the case and you're following all the tips, fully independent sleeper and is waking around like the 10 to 11 hour and you're pretty convinced your little one's hungry, but then it's hard for them to fall back asleep. You could try to add in a dream feed. I don't love dream feeds um, for older babies. I really don't I actually don't recommend them. I just pulled my hair out and threw it out the window. <laughs> um, you can try it because it makes like a dream feed makes complete sense. I feed the baby before I go to bed and everyone's fine and baby sleeps later in the morning. You can certainly try it. I just have found that they often don't work for older babies. So do it for a few nights. But if the early wakings persist, what I would do instead, excuse me, is let my little one tell me when they're hungry. So let them wake at 4.30 or 5 a.m. and then just go in there. No changing diaper, no stimulation, nothing. Just gently picking my baby up, feeding my baby, and then putting my baby right back down in the crib to fall back asleep on their own and then ideally sleep another hour or two. That's what I would do because, again, dream feeds don't always work. And that's also the best way for your little one to just start sleeping through that feed or through that hour in time when they're a little bit older. Um, so, yeah, those are two options, Vanessa, and I hope that that helps. Roxy, my son transitioned from three to two naps at six months. He's now 14 months and I feel his awake window is longer now and it makes sense for one nap. He's good with one nap. Is this okay? It's okay, Roxy. You can check out my guide on transitioning to one nap on my website, but it sounds like you know what you're doing. 14 months is usually the age that little ones are ready. So go for it. Just know it can take a few weeks before your little one properly settles into um, one nap a day. It's just a big adjustment for them. So don't get frustrated if sometimes he needs two naps. New age girl on the floor. I like that name. Four month old, planning to sleep in the bassinet until six months. Doctor recommended sleep training. Can you sleep train in a bassinet? Yes, or do we need to remove her to her nursery? No, you can sleep train in a bassinet in your bedroom if you want. Um, the one thing I will say though, is some babies roll before six months. And if your little one starts to roll, not as properly rolling, but starts to show signs that they wanna roll, they're kicking that leg up, and scooting their little bottom, then you need to transition to the crib sooner, okay? So let your little one show you. But if that hasn't happened at six months, then yeah, transition to the crib. No, you can totally sleep train in a bassinet. You can totally sleep train while room sharing. Um, what I would do, like what we did with our little guy is my bassinet was like right next to my side of the bed, you know, for a few months. Then I moved it to the foot of our bed and then I moved it to like a corner of the bedroom. So that can help us not wake each other so 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 much especially if like a breastfeeding mom babies can just smell us so if you were going to begin sleep training i would just try to move the bassinet to another like as far away from your bed in the room as possible but no you can totally do it good luck Geraldine. i'm trying to sleep train my baby when i noticed she started sucking on her fingers to put herself to sleep i was told it's a hard habit to break so i should give her a pacifier instead it worked for i want to hear the rest of the story 
where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, yeah, I lost you. Sorry, let me find you again. Um, I... It sounds like you already gave her the pacifier. It, and it, it sounds like you're going to say it worked for a few days, but what I would say is no. I would let my little one suck on their thumb or suck their fingers because it's attached to them and it's a lot easier to maintain. So I would do that. And I wouldn't necessarily introduce... A pacifier it depends on the circumstances if you're already in the midst of sleep training or i mean unless your little one had an extremely song extremely strong um association with sucking and you felt like they really needed it then you could introduce a pacifier but if i saw my little one sucking on their fingers and that it was soothing them it's fine to let them do that it's a lot easier as well um so if you're going to say that the pacifier worked for a few days but not, isn't working then don't push a pacifier on your baby it's fine for them to suck their fingers it's a way of self-soothing. It's totally okay. You're welcome, Diana. Um, Rita, do daytime naps have to be at the same time daily? Wake times will be longer eventually. Um, I recommend you follow awake times in the beginning when you're first helping your little ones start to sleep better. So then nap times won't always be the exact same time every day. But let's say your little one does sleep well at night and naps really well, like you've been through the sleep training journey and now you're just in like a great like maintenance phase, it really is good if your little one sleeps at the same time every day because you're setting your baby's body clock to sleep at the same time every day, which means it's gonna be easier for them every day, which means you're not gonna get like nap refusals as much. You'll still get them sometimes because they're babies and toddlers. But if you can prime your baby's body to sleep at the same time, it really only works in your favor and in their favor. So I would really work toward consistent nap times. Again, once my little one was sleeping great at night and taking long and restful naps every day. I would try to work around that. Rachie Turner, 15 week old is waking one and a half to two hourly. Doesn't need feeding every time, but need hands on to settle, which is new. Read your guides. Have we hit the four month sleep regression? We have a good PNR. I mean, you could have if it's all of a sudden waking this often. Definitely try to not feed that often for sure. If you can give a little hands on support and get your little one right back to sleep quickly, I would do that. If you can keep them in the bassinet or crib, a little bit of hands on, lots of shh, like a really loud shushing, they like that. A little bit of padding or like rocking them or rubbing them. I would definitely do that because it's minimal support. It keeps them in their crib. It doesn't introduce more night feed. So really try to do that your hardest. Um, it could be the regression coming early. It could be a sign that they're going through a big development, which is a great sign. Um, You've read my guides because I was going to say I have three and four month old sleep guides. I would just kind of, yeah, try to be as hands off as possible, meaning not picking up and feeding back to sleep, rocking back to sleep. If you can keep a little in the crib, just ride this wave. Keep them well rested during the day. <laughs> keep them well rested during the day. Try to do as little help as you can at night. Um, follow all the tips from my three and four month old sleep guides and then hopefully... You can kind of ride this wave out and get through this, the development. Don't be scared of the four-month regression. It sounds very, 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 very scary. I will say my daughter had a big one and my son had a small one. So it doesn't, it's not always the worst thing in the world. I was waiting every day. I was looking at him like, is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen today? And like his sleep patterns changed. I think there's a bird in my house. <laughs> there's a bird in my house <laughs> downstairs. Um... I knew I heard something. Uh, I hope it's a bird. Uh, sorry, I noticed his sleep pattern changing, but he didn't go through this like really dramatic regression at night. He didn't wake up. I'm gonna kick myself for this. He's, you know, he didn't have all the dramatic signs, but his sleep patterns did change. So it's not always the worst thing in the world, I would say. Rachie, um, there's a bird trapped in my house. What do I do? All right, good luck. Hang in there and touch base in a few days and let us know um, how it's going. Elise, my four and a half month old sleeps from seven to one, then wakes at two and three to be resettled before feeding at four. Does this sound normal? He's not hungry, he just wants the dummy back. Am I setting myself for a bad habit replacing it? If I had a four and a half month old who was only feeding once at night and I could do a quick dummy re replacement at two and three, I'd probably hang out there to be honest with you, Elise. And then once your little one is like five to five and a half months, I would reevaluate. And then I would say, okay, do I want to wean off the pacifier? Do I want to sleep train with the pacifier or do I want to sleep train without the pacifier? And then I would make the decision at that point. Um, I mean, getting up twice to replace the pacifier every night is annoying, 
but I would hang in there right now because your little one's still a little bit young. I would definitely just try to keep him on that one night feed, try not to feed him anymore. And I would see how the next few weeks go because your little one's in this big four month range, right? The four month age where a lot of development happens. Then at like 20, 21, 22 weeks adjusted age from your baby's due date, then I'd say, okay, where are we right now? Okay, I'm replacing the pacifier twice a night, but we're still on one night feed. Let's try to sleep train without the pacifier and see how that goes. Or I'm only replacing by the pacifier once a night usually. Um, I'm cool to teach more independent sleep incorporating the pacifier. So that kind of gives you a few options. I hope that helps. Lots of people joining. Welcome everybody. And while I have some questions, what do I do if baby wakes up before the alarm in the morning? <laughs> cry. No, I'm joking. Do I treat this as a night waking even if it's six? How do I do pick up, put down method? Lots of questions. So here's the thing. 6 a.m. is morning, really and truly. Like meaning we have to have like a hard line. We have to have a line in the sand of what is night and what is morning. If your little one ever wakes up before six in the morning, it is nighttime and you do your sleep training steps if you're sleep training. But if your little one wakes at six, 6.15, 6.30, like between the 6 and 7 o'clock hour when we don't want them to wake, but it's considered morning, you can certainly try to get them back to sleep. It depends on bedtime. I mean, if your baby's going to bed at like 8 o'clock, then I would say, hey, if you move bedtime earlier, they'll probably sleep later in the morning. But if your little one's going to bed at 6.30 or 6.45 and waking up at 6 to 6.15 in the morning, you can certainly try to get them back to sleep until 6.45 and have a full 12 hours night sleep, but it may not work and we kind of have to be okay with that. So it really depends on what time bedtime is and if it's being realistic. Certainly try, but if you are trying for several weeks and you're beating like your head against the wall and your little one's gotten like 11 to 11 and a half hours of night sleep, you may have to be okay with the 6 a.m. wake up. It won't last forever, I promise you. Um, how does the pick up put down method work? If you look on my Instagram page from a few weeks back, I have a post called Sleep Training Methods Explained and I talk about the pick up put down method in that post. All right, I hope that helps. Liana, I live in Greece too. It is difficult to move bedtime earlier than 8.30. If she wakes up at eight and sleeps three hours a day with the wake times three hours, it is okay to take to keep bedtime at 8.30, even move it to nine. I know we all want late bedtimes. Um, it depends on your little one, but if your little one goes to sleep at 8.30, and wakes up at eight in the morning, that's okay. Like, that's fine, that's great. Um, and if you are able to get the proper awake times and the nap recommendations, that's fine. Just cross your fingers, count your lucky stars, your baby has a later sleep schedule. It's only if your little one's sleep is really struggling that you would need to consider changing the sleep routine, changing the sleep schedule and moving bedtime earlier. Um, but otherwise, it's fine. You don't have to change it just because I like typically say, baby's bedtime should be this. We certainly have babies that fall outside of the range. And so again, if your night is 8.30 to eight and your baby's napping great, that's fantastic. If you wanna move it to 9 p.m., you could try. You could do 8.45 for a few days and then nine. I wouldn't go later than nine um, and just see how your little one does. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, Divya, my five month old baby sleeps around midnight to 2 a.m. <gasps> and sleep, continues to sleep up until nine, 11 hours. It's not the same every day. And he wakes up three to four times in between for a dream feed, how to change it. Listen, uh, this happens, I get, I get this question asked more often than you might realize. Little ones whose bedtime is insanely late and not like a newborn. It could be like a six month, a 12 month old. So the best way, if you're struggling with insanely late bedtimes and your baby's sleeping in in the morning, the best way is to slowly move the sleep schedule earlier and how you do that is you have to start waking them up earlier in the morning. So your little one, let's say, sleeps 10 hours at night. So let's say they, excuse me, let's say they go to bed at two in the morning and they wake up at noon. Then what you need to do is you, like whatever time they fall asleep at night. So if it's two in the morning, you're gonna say, okay, I'm not letting you sleep till noon. I'm setting my alarm for 11 a.m. You set the alarm for 11 a.m. and you get your little one out of bed at that time. You get them up and you immediately go outside, let some natural light hit their face, play, do something fun, feed them. Like they're gonna be grouchy, they're gonna be grumpy because they got a little bit less sleep, but this is the only way to reset their body clock. Even if it's just hanging out in a window, that's totally fine. Have their breakfast while they sit in the window or sit in the balcony or sit in the yard. That's totally fine, but you have to wake them up earlier every morning. So it's 11 o'clock and then the next day it's gonna be 10.30. Then the next day it's gonna be 10 a.m. 
and the next day it's going to be 9 30 and then however much earlier you woke them in the morning then bedtime needs to move earlier so your your naps will come earlier and bedtime comes earlier this is the easiest way to do it you can't just say that's it you're going to bed at 10 o'clock tonight if they slept until noon it's not going to happen you have to shift it earlier and the easiest way to do it is waking them in the morning you may be dealing with a grouchy baby but just tell yourself it's okay in one to two weeks we're going to be on a normal sleep routine and then you just keep waking up earlier until you get to a time that you're happy with like you can try to have an eight o'clock wake up in the morning and an 8 p.m bedtime since your baby appears to be a night owl but just know you may have to settle in around seven to eight in the morning wake up seven to eight p.m bedtime if you go on my website <clears throat> there's an article called how to move your three month old baby's bedtime earlier because I got asked a lot for that specific age, but I kind of also made the article more general after I published it, and it has tips for every age, so you can check that out. Kahui! My seven month old will, will wake at 6 a.m., feed at eight, but then be tired at nine to 9.30, but he doesn't even sleep ever sleep longer than 45 minutes to an hour. Is this typical for a seven month old? So if, you're, if your seven month old wakes at six o'clock, then I would have him asleep at eight. So yeah, I would move that morning nap earlier. Awake times for a seven month old should be two to three hours. And usually a two hour awake time in the morning is what they prefer. So if they wake at six, I would have them asleep at eight. So I'd probably wake at six and then feed at like 7.15. If it's like breakfast, you're talking about solids, like feed around 7.15, then have a little bit of a feed and then like a milk feed and then have them asleep by eight o'clock. That can help extend that first naps. Then the second awake time of the day can be two and a half hours. And then the, uh, they can stay that throughout the day depending on how many naps they have. And the awake time before bedtime can be two and a half to three hours. Mama Cakes and her boardlets. Hi, Jilly. Thanks so much for your help so far. You have the triplets, right? Yeah, one of my triplets, 17 month old, adjusted, struggles to pass one and a half hours for her nap and not sure why as the other two can sleep so much longer because she's her own unique person. <laughs> um, you just have to, you know, work a little bit harder with her and just stay consistent. Um, when you have triplets, they all have to be on the same routine. So it's great that your other two are napping great. You're just gonna have to hold tight, mama. Try to keep her in her crib if possible for the full time that the other uh, triplets nap like if the other ones are napping let's say two and a half hours and she wakes up after one and a half try to keep her in her crib as long as she's not screaming and waking them up um and just just know that it it's going to take her longer but she will get there it's just that every little one's different really so try to keep her in her crib as long as possible if she's losing it screaming try to go into her room i don't know if they're sharing a room if they're sharing a room just get her out of there but if they're not, if she's in her own spot, which may be a good idea, if she's not napping as well as the others, the others could share a room for naps. Maybe she naps in a different spot, a dark like bathroom, walk-in closet, like anywhere that you can, she can be on her own. Uh, maybe she's a little bit more distractible. So you could do that. And then if she wakes up early, you just try to keep her in her crib. And if that means you have to go to her and then try to do that just to help her body understand I'm staying in this dark room. I'm staying in my crib. Eventually I'm going to need to nap here for longer. All right, hang in there. She disturbs the other two. They have just transitioned to one nap. How can I encourage a longer nap, like two to three hours as recommended? Okay, hopefully those tips help. Terry, one more thing. During nap time, he sleeps in the bed independently, but tosses and turns in the crib. Not sure if that makes a difference for his sleep. He eats one to two times a night. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean he sleeps in a different bed? Like your bed, but tosses and turns in the crib. Not sure if that makes a difference for his sleep. I'm not sure, sorry Terry, can you give me more details? Manuela, good morning. I bathe my baby every night after feeding and after the bath she becomes fussy and starts crying till she's asleep. Is this normal? She's three months. Yes, mommy, it just means that she's tired. Baths just wear our little ones out. My little guy's the same way. He loves his bath. He looks forward to it. He loves it. He kicks, he splashes, he loves it. But when he comes out, he's like to bed. He just knows like it's time to go to sleep. So she's just, she's just tired. You could try to move your whole routine 15 minutes earlier um, tonight so she's not as tired but really at three months you don't need a long and drawn out bedtime routine um, you can shorten it right up so you don't have to like include books for instance for a three month old instead after bath you could take her to her room give her a feed get her dressed and then just get her to sleep um, but that's totally normal Lang Charlie, we aim for a 7.30 bedtime for our four-month-old. We follow the bedtime routine schedule, but the breastfeed pre-bed can last for an hour. Also, she doesn't feed unless in the bed. What should I do? 
Um, can you fit in a feed earlier? Like, can you fit in a, a feed before bath time? Is the pre-bed breastfeed so long because she's just that hungry? Or is she using it to fall asleep and it's taking that long? If she's genuinely that hungry, that's a long time to breastfeed. But if she's genuinely that hungry and like vigorously eating for an hour, then I would say definitely try to feed her once or even twice before like bedtime. So if it's a 7.30 bedtime, like at 5 or 5.30, I try to give her a good feed. And then at like 6.30, I try to give her a good feed, you know, so that she can kind of stock up before the night. But if instead you're like, nah, she's kind of getting drowsy and she's using it as a way to unwind, um, that's different. And I think Charlie, you're interested in sleep training. If I am correct, I think we were messaging. Um, if she's using it as a way to fall back, as like as a way to wind down and fall asleep, that's kind of good because you're going to be removing it as a sleep association really, really, really soon. So if you think she's hungry, try to feed her a little bit earlier and more often in the evening. Um, but if you think she's using it as a way to fall back asleep, then just hang tight. And when you begin sleep training, you will stop feeding to sleep. Um, she doesn't feed unless in the bed. Do you mean in your bed? What do you mean? If she's only going to feed in your bed, then if you want to slowly transition out of that, let's say you're side lying together, which you're probably doing because it takes an hour. Instead, I would sit up tonight and kind of feed her with you sitting up. Um, that can just be a little bit of a different way. Maybe instead of cuddling with mom, mom's like holding her, um, and feeding her more in a more traditional, um, position, but really and truly I would try to move all of her bedtime routine in the room that she's going to sleep in. So if you are feeding her in your bedroom and then moving her to her room to fall asleep, I would from bath time move straight to her bedroom and have her whole peaceful nightly ritual happen in her bedroom. You don't want her to have to go from like mommy's bed, which is like this glorious place. Now I have to go into my bedroom and now I have to fall asleep on my own. Instead, you want to take your bed off the menu and really work toward everything happening in her Okay, I hope I understand that. I understood that right. You're welcome, Kayleen. Liana, our program is three to three and a half hours awake time. Wakes up at 8 a.m., naps for 40 minutes. Then again, naps from three to five. Okay, that's cool. Two hours, 40 minutes. Bedtime is 8 to 8.30. Is it okay? Breastfeed once again. No, okay, seven month old. That's what I wanted to know. Um, naps for 40 minutes. Naps for two hours. Breastfeeds are once a night. I think it sounds great. Enjoy it. <laughs> I guess the bird got out of my house. I don't hear it anymore. Oh, it's like waiting for me in my bed. Um, Sia Killa, many thanks. We followed your tips for sleep training and it made our life a lot better. That's awesome. Well, well done. Thanks for letting me know. I'm loving all these hearts. Relusha, what are your thoughts on doing night and naps together? I've seen two camps. One says it's confusing. The other says night first to ensure his baby isn't overtired from lack of naps. I fall in the second camp. And I know there are many people that are like, you're confusing your baby. Why would you do that? And while that might seem to make sense, what I have found is babies are really clever and they can figure out to fall asleep like one way with grandma, another way with dad, another day with way with mom, one way at daycare, another way at home. And really and truly nap training is usually harder than nighttime sleep training. So we know that a well-rested baby sleeps better. We know this. So why would I nap train, which is going to lead to some nap refusals. It's going to lead to some really short, crappy naps. It's going to lead to some flat out, completely nap refusals. Why would I have an overtired, cranky baby and then go, hey, let's now sleep train at night. When we do this, I have found it really, it can be a disaster. And it's like a more aggressive way of sleep training. I'm not saying it can't work, but it's more aggressive. So it's, it usually leads to more crying, more stress. And you can get it done and maybe even get it done a little bit quicker. But instead, if we just slow down and only do nights and continue to help your baby stay well rested during the day, it usually leads to less resistance um, from your little one, less stress, less tears. So that's kind of, that's why I promote it. Um, yeah, but I don't think like there's only one way to do it. It's just that's the reason why I promote only working on nights. All right, I hope that helps. SLV Wesley. <laughs> oh, de quel pays et vous, je ne comprends pas. So you don't understand. Um, in what country are you? I don't understand your language. I'm, in e I'm speaking English, but you're French. My French is like, I used to speak it pretty decently, but I don't anymore. I'm only going to embarrass myself. So I'm sorry. Désolé. <laughs> um, 
Do I have a team member that speaks French? We have a team member that speaks Italian, Greek, probably Spanish. Um, but no, I'm sorry. My daughter's taking French though. Swatiko, I am following all the tips on your website for my 12 month old. However, he doesn't nap more than one to one and a half hours a day. How do I get him to sleep more in the daytime? Check out a guide on my website called how to get your resistant toddler to nap. That can help you. And also make sure you're following my 12 month old sleep guide. So awake times, oh, that's my guy, but I, I have 10 more minutes till so he has to go to tennis. Um, awake times at this age should be about three hours in the morning, three and a half hours during the day, and four hours before bedtime. So that might help if you tweak awake times a little bit. If this is a new problem, just know that like 12 months can be um, an age where little ones start to, it's like they turn one and they're like, I'm big now. So it can be the age where little ones start to test limits and resist sleep. So if this is new, then I would say just stick tight to your routines. Sleep will come back. But if your little one kind of have you've tried for a really long time and they still want that more than one to one and a half hours a day. Are you meaning, is this just one nap a day? If it's just one nap a day, I try to offer two naps a day because they're still quite young. It kind of depends on what's going on. But how do you get, you get your resistant toddler to nap? How to extend your baby's short naps? Those guides will help you. Maybe you haven't seen all of them, but hopefully those guides can give you some tips. Ah, there you are. What country are you from? I don't understand the language. <laughs> Willig McCammy. It always takes my 20. Do you not understand like my accent? <laughs> I'm American, but my husband is Australian. So maybe I have a little bit of Aussie twang. And if so, I apologize for that. But I also grew up in the South in Louisiana. So I've got all kind of different accents. Um, it always takes my 24 month old one hour to fall asleep once in bed. Been doing the PNR for a couple weeks. No consistent change in the one hour suggestions. Look at your sleep schedule. So a 24 month old, um, once your little one turns two, they should be napping about two hours per day and awake time should be about five, maybe six hours. So maybe you're putting your little one in the crib at like four and a half hours after they woke from their nap and they're not tired enough. But if your little one's sleeping well and it just takes an hour to wind down and fall asleep, then you could push bedtime like 30 to 40 minutes later and then they don't take as long to fall asleep. That makes sense. Um, okay, I hope that helps. My why would a 10 week old baby suddenly wake more after sleeping independently? Growth spurt, change in sleep pattern? Yes and yes. Check out my two month old sleep guide on my website. It's got lots of specific sleep tips for your two month old. Many newborns can sleep long stretches, actually. They can sleep really, really deeply. Um, and often that changes. Usually it's closer to three to four months, but could be earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be a lot of different reasons. If you make sure you're always, I don't love pushing uh, weaning night feedings at 10 weeks old, but I will say make sure to maximize your baby's daytime nutrition. So feed them like every two to three hours all day long. That can help them go longer at night if they're getting in the majority of their calories during the day, but don't aggressively night wean. A lot of parents reach out and say, my, you know, my young baby only ate once and maybe twice a night. Now they're four months. Now they're five months or older. Why are they needing to feed more in the night? And it's a combination of changing sleep patterns and the needing to teach more independent sleep. The best you can do is continue to encourage independent sleep and then you know when your little one wakes in the night seeming hungry, they're actually genuinely hungry because they don't need you to help them fall back asleep. Do you know what I mean? But if you're helping them fall asleep and they wake up, you're like, maybe they're hungry six times a night. But if they always sleep independently, then you know if they're kicking up a fuss at night, they must be hungry. So that's a good way. Just continue trying to encourage independent sleep and check out my two month old sleep guide. You're welcome, new age girl. What flag is that? Is that Cameroon? I have no idea, I'm bad with flags. Cecilia, I managed to get her down to one feet at 2 a.m., but two weeks after she went back to two to five wake ups at night, she sleeps longer next to me or on me. She won't go back to sleep if dad goes in. I know, but sleeping next to you or on you is not the long-term solution. And she will learn to sleep longer on her own. You just have to show her the way. I mean, you know, it's not safe for our little ones to sleep on us. Um, not preaching. I'm just, you know, trying to help you. Um, it's a tough one, but usually this phase doesn't last. Like my baby sleeps a lot better if they're on me, but that doesn't last because they become mobile and they start rolling around and then you're really not sleeping because it's not safe and you're worried about them and they start waking more often anyway. So I don't know how old your little one is, forgive me, um, but I would really start working on more independent sleep. She can learn a new way of sleeping, I promise. 
Manuela, I started training my baby three months old, day 14 now, but since two days she started waking up at 1.30 at night, and I don't know why. I'm dream feeding her at 11 and bottle at 4, but 1.30 a.m. Why? Three months is young to be sleep training, Manuela, and I don't, I don't start sleep training until five months old. So I really wouldn't be pushing your three-month-old too hard. Instead, check out my three-month-old sleep guides on my website, and... Um, and you can follow the recommendations from those guides, which can help your little one sleep longer stretches at night. But I would not push a three-month-old to, like, aggressively sleep train. They're not yet developmentally ready. Paul Townsend. I have a nine-month-old baby girl twin. No, boy-girl twins. Oh, and we've been using your tips for bed and naps. Two things slightly puzzle me. How to put two babies down at the same time. Sometimes infrequently just one parent is available. What's your second question? How to get them to understand that the cots are a safe friendly space. They seem to be terrified of being left alone there. So that's an easy one. Just let them play their play in their cots during the day. Put them in there when they're awake. You stay with them. Put some fun little toys like stuffed animals and toys for them to play with and let them see like see the crib is a fun place. We can be happy hanging out here on our own. So do that like once a day and do it every single day. Or maybe daddy can like sit in a chair and read books to them and they're in their little cribs assuming they're room sharing in little cribs. They have some toys. It's a fun happy space. Um, and how to put two babies down at the same time. Really, that's what, like, sleep training for twin parents. You know, I find a lot of twin parents saying, like, I have to sleep train because I have to be able to do this on my own. Like, it's otherwise it's too hard. So we have a lot of twin parents who have joined our program, and they usually sleep train in the same room using the same method at the same time. And they usually do more hands-off methods just because it's easier logistically. Um, and then once they have the same bedtime, then it's literally like, kiss, kiss, I love you, baby George. Kiss, kiss, I love you, baby Charlotte, you know, and then you just put them in their cribs and then you start the sleep training. So independent sleep really becomes more of a must because what do you do if you're on your own and you're spending an hour getting twin one down and then twin two wakes up? So did you tell me how old they are? No, but if they're five months or older, you can begin sleep training. And we have had several twin parents join and they get really good success. I find they can be even more motivated and consistent because they're like, I have to get this done. All right, let us know if you have any more questions. Guys, I'll probably answer one more question and then I've got to go relieve my husband so we can go play tennis. Uh, Mrs. Jenkins. Hi, Julie. I was having issues with my daughter waking early anyway in the five o'clock hour. She goes to bed by six and was napping around 11.15 for an hour. Now she's waking up before five and refusing her naps. Is that what you were going to say? Refusing naps. I try keeping naps at 11.15 and also shifting them. Still luck with naps. She's only napped twice in two weeks and I've been putting her to bed around 5.45. I'm not sure how old she is, but she's definitely a toddler. So check out my guide, How to Get Your Resistant Toddler to Nap. It was recently updated, so check out that guide. Follow all of those tips. Keep doing what you're doing with the awake times. It sucks that you have a super early bedtime, but when your little one doesn't nap, they have to have an early bedtime. And then if they go to bed at 5.45 and they wake up at 5 in the morning, I mean, it kind of makes sense. So you got to get that nap back, assuming your little one is younger than three years old. You've got to get the nap back, and you can get the nap back. So read my guide, How to Get Your Resistant Toddler to Nap. I think he's cooking. I may give him another minute then. The burger. Last question. For a 26-month-old, she's been sleeping with us. Can we start to try putting her in her own crib in my room, or does she need to be in her own room? She nurses all night. She does not need to be in her own room, but I will say that little ones usually sleep through the night quicker when they're in their own room. It's just the way it is, especially if she's two. I mean, it depends on how she is. If she's quite sensitive and really, like, clingy and, like, really always needs to know that you're there, you could first start with the crib in your room and have it next to your side of the bed and talk to her. Explain, explain, explain. This is your big girl bed. You're right next to mommy. And have her there, and your goal at that point is I'm just going to keep her in her bed all night, like, and she can be right next to me in the bed. Do that, and when you've had her in bed in her crib all night for a few days, then you could try to just move her crib a little bit to your foot of her bed and explain, no, mommy and daddy are still here. You can still see us. And then you can have her stay there for a few nights. And then you can move her to her own room if you feel like she's still struggling because she can see you, she can see your bed, and she's just angry about it. Then you can move her to her own bedroom. You may find that you're a bit more relieved and she's a bit more relieved if you kind of camp out in her bedroom for like two nights, not two weeks, for two nights. So you stay there while she falls asleep. You know, you go in when she wakes up in the night, you just make a little pallet on the floor that gets her used to her new sleep space have her play in her room during the day it's a happy 
positive, loving space. She's got her toys there. It's not just a place she goes to sleep on her own every night. It's her bedroom. Have her move some of her toys and stuffed animals in there. Spend some time in there and hang out in your room less. So her room more, your room less to where you're not even going into your bedroom ever with her. Um, definitely do that. Those can give you some ideas. But if she really is dependent on nursing all night long, it may be better to get her in her bedroom. You certainly can do cold turkey, but that gives you an idea of how to gradually do it over the course of a week. Okay, guys, I have to go now. Um, ah, we had a lot of questions unanswered. Sorry, guys, I try to go as quickly as I can. Thank you all for joining. It was a really, really great call. I will see you guys all tomorrow at the same time, back to our usual time, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, take care. Good luck with all these sleep tips. Have some fun today. Um, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.